Good morning, traders. It is Monday, September the 9th. Taking a look at the charts, we got the SP500 futures here, and uh, more or less, we had this huge consolidation through August. We we're waiting for some type of breakout, either direction. We were expect expecting or hoping for a break to the downside. It would have been a huge move. It said the market happened to gap really high last week above this level, and it's slowly grinding its way up towards this 3,000 or this previous high here going forward. Now, if we were to look at the Fibonacci uh, extension targets, get an idea for where this is going, uh, we can get an idea of where the upside target is. More or less, the rally started here. We had a rally all the way up to this candle high, sold off down to this candle low, and then we carry it forward. This is where price could end up going, uh, which is this rally. Whoops, let me grab the tool. We've got the initial rally. We got the pullback, and then more or less we've come up to the 618, sidestepped a couple days, which is a good thing. Usually means we're going to see 100% measured move to the upside. This would bring us up to more or less the previous high in the equities market. So overall, there's still some more upside this week. The way the market did that, though, uh, if we were to look at an ETF, let's pull up the SPY, the market gapped substantially higher uh, the next day, doing almost half the move, taking up most of the, the move outside of regular trading hours. And really, it's just kind of had a tiny move up and it's kind of grinding here and uh, making it uh, a high risk trade for anyone to jump on. This gap should get filled eventually. So if we do come up and get this target somewhere up in this area, we should eventually see some pullback to fill this gap in price. And if we take a look at the 30 minute chart here, you get an idea for uh, the gap in the gap window, uh, more or less. This is this is the bottom we measured. This was the pullback, and then we got the upside target uh, being somewhere up into this area. But we have this gap window where the market closed and where the market opened, and this gap window tends to get filled. We should eventually see the price uh, work itself down and and come back and fill this spike or this gap window before it potentially continues to go a whole lot higher and uh, we'll have to just let it work its way out more or less this was the resistance area on the chart and the market loves to do these bridges where in pre-market trading or post hours the market makers can move the market because there's almost no volume and they can they can gap above resistance or gap below support and really throw the market off and that's what it has done at this point so let's take a look at uh, let's take a look over at the rest of the market here we are seeing uh, metals are moving up today so stocks are up about four tenths of a percent uh, or a quarter percent actually for the SP 500. Uh, we are seeing gold up a little bit. You can see it is selling off. It's uh, got these lime green areas, which is putting us into a short term oversold area. And the big question is if the stock market is going to continue to rally, then we could see the market or gold form some type of bear flag or, or work itself up into a shoulder here. And eventually we'll have some neckline that if it does break, we're going to start to see a really big pullback and this could be the early stages of a, a topping formation and silver shows this much better silver is more raw emotion and and uh, and price action and the uh, 30 minute chart shows this really clear more or less last week we had the initial drop it formed this bear flag bear flags are the halfway point and then we saw the second half of this move come into play and if we use a Fibonacci extension it does these calculations for us we go from the high down to this low here and then up to this the high point of this price action so there's still more potential downside for gold uh, for silver uh, so we've got the sell-off you've got the rebound and now we're here at the 618 and when we chat around the 618 we usually see the hundred percent measured move get filled and if you look at this pattern we've had a drop and we're forming a little bear flag or pennant formation which is a continuation we could very easily see this 100% measured move hit and see it go even further simply because this here is another type of area where we can draw a Fibonacci extension target and it shows it could go down below here to the 1750 silver. So uh, we'll see how things start to shake out this week. We're letting the markets kind of work themselves out. There's a lot of big selling. We were talking about how silver was going straight up. What goes straight up usually is going to come straight back down. And that's what we've done. We talked about usually half of the move at least gets taken back. And if you look at this rally, we had a consolidation here at the halfway point. 
it rallied the second half of the move and it sold off half of that move again. So we'll see where we go today or this week. But overall, metals could be in a consolidation phase and form some type of uh, maybe a small topping formation and still pull back for a little while longer. Uh, looking over at gold miners, again, kind of similar type of price action. Let me just zoom out a bit here. Uh, more or less, they've kind of formed that head and shoulders formation, which is a topping formation. You have uh, you got a shoulder, you've got a head, you've got a shoulder. They're all pretty equal kind of time frame, which is a very balanced head. And we're going to have a neckline across here that if this neckline is broken, we could start to see a much larger drop. And the way it works is the height of the head to the neckline, this distance is usually the potential for the breakdown in price. So it would break this low, uh, trigger stop orders. It would break this low, trigger more stop orders, and probably come down into this support zone going forward. And if we look at the 30-minute the chart of the GDX, you can see it went from an uptrend. Uh, it went uh, more or less uh, short or net neutral here to the downside. This is the early sign of this trend reversing, and uh, it looks like it's got potential to continue to sell off uh, if this neckline here is broken, it could be a very big drop in the gold miners. Let's take a look over at the dollar. The dollar's uh, uh, had a huge pullback after it reached almost 100 on its own index. It has pulled back. It's trying to find support. It is still in an uptrend. If we look at the big picture here, it is still channeling and running its way up. You can see it just oscillates very, very steady kind of cycles. More or less, it looks like we could chop around a little bit more. But overall, the trend is still to the upside, and I wouldn't, exp wouldn't be surprised to see it continue to go up and, and try and push these new highs again and test them. Eventually, when the dollar does start to roll over, uh, we're gonna, that's when we're probably going to see precious metals really start to take off, and, and the dollar could break down in a big way. But at this point, it's still in a full-out bull market, strong trend to the upside. It got overbought, got sold down to get back into a support zone short term oversold and it's just kind of sitting here and going to continue to probably grind its way higher the trend is more likely to continue than it is to reverse so uh, keep in mind a rising dollar could keep metals somewhat muted uh, but when the dollar does roll over that's when we're going to probably see precious metals and commodities really start to take off uh, going forward Looking over at uh, natural gas, natural gas popping up to the significant resistance area. If we go way back on the charts here, if it'll load, natural gas going back all the way to 2016, you can see there's a lot of significant pivot zones along this, this chart here. We've got a high, we've got a breakout, a low, a low, a low. Uh, there's a bunch of lows here. Another one, we traded this one for a really nice gain. Um, earlier in the year, started to trade through it, it broke down. You could argue kind of got close to it. And now we're testing that level again. And what was once support becomes resistance once you're underneath it. And that's what this green line is. More or less, we came up to this previous high last week. That's where we exited our position. It was the first key level that we could see natural gas really reverse and, and quickly sell off. Now it is squeezing right up to this green line and it's up about a percent and a third today so i would wouldn't be surprised if we see some big selling step in we got big volume moving in which means everybody's piling into this trade now which means it's probably kind of a greed based move everybody's chasing price higher piling in and we'll see if this ends up uh, forming some type of pullback but overall the price action is very strong keep in mind what goes almost straight up usually will give back half of that move or chunk of it. And if it can form some type of three wave correction or some bull flag, uh, that's a good sign. More or less, we broke a previous pivot high here. We broke a, a very clear standout spike high here and we broke this one. So this downward momentum is clearly broken. We now have upward momentum and uh, it is overbought, but eventually we are looking for price to keep going higher looking forward. So we got in down over here, caught this beautiful move, we're going to look for it to reset, build a launch pad. Hopefully we can get back in wherever uh, we get another buy signal and uh, maybe play the next breakout above this level. If it can break this level, we could see a very significant rally going forward. And this would be a really nice basing formation, a rounding bottom with uh, resistance. Taking a look at crude oil, up eight tenths of a percent. It's starting to try, it's trying to break out of this range again. It's a pretty ugly chart. I'm not a big fan of crude here. 
Um, it's got a, a lot of chatter, a lot of noise, but more or less, this is kind of the, the core range, but it's all over the place recently. And um, if it starts to break above here, obviously the next run, the depth of this box, this consolidation is usually the power it has to the upside. Uh, so it goes in line with this blue resistance area right through here. We do have a previous high a little bit lower, which it would, could potentially stall earlier. But overall, not a fan of it. It keeps faking out, going to new highs or poking to a high, selling off. It's done this a few times and it's just in a big range. So I'm not a huge fan of crude at this point. It feels too much like a, a gamble, a high risk gamble. Anyways, that's about it for this morning. And I'll talk to you in a little bit. Oh, let me just touch on bonds real quick. Uh, bonds are down this morning. They look like they're trying to form potentially a little bit of a topping phase as well. If if money keeps rolling into equities, uh, bonds could roll over. You could argue we got a little bit of a topping formation. This could end up being some type of bear flag. More or less, we've got a support level right across here. If it starts to break down, uh, it's going to sell off. We are still long bonds with a small position looking for hopefully fear in the market to hold bonds up afloat. They are kind of the least volatile. Hopefully we'll start to see them uh, potentially go back up, test these highs before getting stopped out. But we're really close to getting stopped out this morning with them trading lower, uh, which is no big deal. We've taken our money off the table right up near the highs. We took some money off and we're looking to see if uh, fear is going to step back into the market and continue to push bonds higher. If not, we get out the rest of our position at our entry price uh, for a break even on the other portion of it. And we'll move on to a new day and uh, the, let the market do its thing. Maybe we get a nice three wave correction, something down into this 50 uh, day moving average somewhere over in this zone. And uh, we'll just go from there. Anyways, that's it for now. Talk to you in a bit. Bye-bye.